This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kelly Bechere of Mattapoisett, Massachusetts. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Canto 17 to Canto 21. Canto 17. Remember, reader, if ever in the Alps a miss overtook thee, through which thou couldst see not otherwise than through its membrane mole, how, when the vapours humid and condensed begin to dissipate themselves, the sphere of the sun feebly enters in among them, and thy imagination will be swift in coming to perceive how I resaw the sun at first that was already setting. Thus to the faithful footsteps of my master, mating my own, I issued from that cloud to raise already dead on the low shores. O thou imagination that dost steal us so from without sometimes, that man perceives not, although around may sound a thousand trumpets. Who moveth thee if sense impel thee not? Moves thee a light which in the heaven takes form by self or by a will that downward guides it, of her impiety who changed her form into the bird that most delights in singing, and my imagining appeared the trace, and hereupon my mind was so withdrawn within itself that from without there came nothing that then might be received by it, then reigned within my lofty fantasy. One crucified disdainful and ferocious in countenance, and even thus was dying. Around him were the great Ahasuerus, Esther his wife, and the just Mordechai, who was in word and action so entire. And even as this image burst asunder of its own self in fashion of a bubble, and which the water it was made of fails, there rose up in my vision a young maiden, bitterly weeping, and she said, O queen! Why hast thou wished in anger to be not? Thou slain thyself, Lavinia, not to lose. Now hast thou lost me. I am she who mourns, mother, at thine ere at another's ruin. As sleep is broken, when upon a sudden new light strikes in upon the eyelids closed, and broken quivers ere it dieth wholly, so this imagining of mine fell down, as soon as the effulgence smote my face, greater by far than what is in our want. I turned me round to see where I might be, when said a voice, Here is the passage up, which from all other purposes removed me, and made my wish so full of eagerness to look and see who was it that was speaking, it never rests till meeting face to face. But as before the sun, which quells the sight, and in its own excess its figure veils, even so my power was insufficient here. This is a spirit divine who in the way of going up directs us without asking, and who with his own light himself conceals. He does with us as man doth with himself, for he who sees the need and waits the asking blindly leads already towards denial. Accord we now our feet to such inviting, let us make haste to mount ere it grow dark, for then we could not till the day return. Thus my conductor said, and I and he together turned our footsteps to a stairway and I, as soon as the first step I reached, near me, perceived a motion as of wings and fanning in the face, and saying, Vieti pacifici, who are without ill anger. Already over us were so uplifted the latest sunbeams which the night pursues, that upon many sides the stars appeared. O oh, manhood mine, why dost thou vanish so, I said within myself, for I perceived the vigour of my legs was put in truce. We at the point were where no more ascends, the stairway upward and were motionless, even as a ship which at the shore arrives. And I gave heed a little, if I might hear, aught whatsoever in the circle knew, then to my master turned me round and said, Say, my sweet father, what delinquency is purged here in the circle where we are? Although our feet may pause, pause not thy speech. And he to me, the love of good remiss in what it should have done is here restored, here plied again the ill-belated oar. But still more openly to understand, turn unto me thy mind, and thou shalt gather some profitable fruit from our delay. Neither creator nor creature ever, son, he began, was destitute of love, natural or spiritual, and thou knowest it. 
the natural was ever without error. But err the other may by evil object, or by too much, or by too little vigor. While in the first it well directed is, and in the second moderates itself, it cannot be the cause of sinful pleasure. But when to ill it turns, and with more care or lesser than it ought, runs after good, against the Creator works his own creation. Hence thou mayst comprehend that love must be the seed within yourselves of every virtue, and every act that merits punishment. Now, inasmuch as never from the welfare of its own subject can love turn its sight, from their own hatred all things are secure, and since we cannot think of any being standing alone, nor from the first divided, of hating him, is all desire cut off. Hence, if, discriminating, I judge well, the evil that one loves is of one's neighbor, and this is born in three modes in your clay. There are, who, by abasement of their neighbor, hope to excel, and therefore only long that from his greatness he may be cast down. There are, who power, grace, honor, and renown, fear they may lose because another rises, thence are so sad that the reverse they love. And there are those whom injury seems to chafe, so that it makes them greedy for revenge, and such must needs shape out another's harm. This threefold love is wept for down below. Now of the other will I have thee here, that runneth after good with measure faulty. Each one confusedly a good conceives, wherein the mind may rest and longeth for it. Therefore to overtake it each one strives. If languid love to look on this attract you, or in attaining unto it this cornice, after just penitence torments you for it, there is other good that does not make man happy. Tis not felicity, tis not the good essence of every good the fruit and root. The love that yields itself too much to this, above us, is lamented in three circles. But how tripartite it may be described, I say not that thou seek it for thyself. End of Canto 17 Canto 18 An end had put unto his reasoning the lofty teacher, and a tent was looking into my face if I appeared content. And I, whom a new thirst still goaded on, without was mute, and said within, Perchance the too much questioning I make annoys him. But that true father, who had comprehended the timid wish, that opened not itself, by speaking gave me hardihood to speak. Whence I, my sight is, master, vivified, so in thy light that clearly I discern whatever thy speech importeth or describes. Therefore I thee entreat, sweet father dear, to teach me love to which thou dost refer, every good action and its contrary. Direct, he said, towards me the keen eyes of intellect, and clear will be to thee the error of the blind who would be leaders. The soul, who is created apt to love, is mobile unto everything that pleases, soon as by pleasure she is waked to action. Your apprehension from some real thing an image draws, and in yourselves displays it, so that it makes the soul turn unto it. And if, when turned, towards it she incline, love is that inclination, it is nature which is by pleasure bound in you anew. Then, even as the fire doth upward move, by its own form which to ascend is born, where longest in its matter it endures. So come the captive soul into desire, which is a motion spiritual, and never rests, until she doth enjoy the thing beloved. Now may apparent be to thee how hidden the truth is from those people who aver all love in itself a laudable thing. Because its matter may perchance appear, I, to be good, but yet not each impression is good, albeit good may be the wax. Thy words and my sequacious intellect, I answered him, have love revealed to me, but that has made me more impregned with doubt. For if love from without be offered us, and with another foot the soul go not, if right or wrong she go, tis not her merit. And he to me, What reason seeth here myself can tell thee? Beyond that await for Beatrice, since tis a work of faith. Every substantial form that segregate from matter is, and with it is united, specific power has in itself collected, which without act is not perceptible, nor shows itself except by its effect, as life does in a plant by the green leaves. 
but still whence cometh the intelligence of the first notions man is ignorant, and the affection for the first allurements, which are in you as instinct in the bee to make its honey, and this first desire, merit of praise or blame, containeth not. Now, that to this all others may be gathered, innate within you is the power that counsels, and it should keep you the threshold of assent. This is the principle from which is taken occasion of desert in you, according as good and guilty loves it takes and winnows. Those who, in reasoning, to the bottom went, were of this innate liberty aware, therefore bequeathed they ethics to the world. Supposing, then, that from necessity springs every love that is within you kindled, within yourselves the power is to restrain it. The noble virtue Beatrice understands by the free will, and therefore see that thou bear it in mind, if she should speak of it. The moon, belated almost unto midnight, now made the stars appear to us more rare, formed like a bucket, that is all ablaze, and counter to the heavens ran through those paths which the sun sets aflame, where he of Rome sees it twixt Sardes and Corsicans go down. And that patrician shade, for whom is named Piatola more than any Mantuan town, had laid aside the burden of my lading. Whence I, who reason manifest and plain in answer to my questions had received, stood like a man in drowsy reverie. But taken from me was this drowsiness suddenly by a people that behind our backs already had come round to us, and as of old is Ismenus and Asipus beside them saw at night the rush and throng, if but the Thebans were in need of Bacchus. So they along that circle curbed their steps. From what I saw of those approaching us, who by good will and righteous love are ridden, full soon they were upon us, because running moved onward all that mighty multitude, and two in the advance cried out, lamenting, Mary in haste unto the mountain ran, and Caesar, that he might subdue Alerda, thrust at Marseilles, and then ran into Spain. Quick, quick, so that the time may not be lost by little love. Forthwith the others cried, for ardour and well-doing freshens grace. O folk, and whom an eager fervour now supplies perhaps delay and negligence, put by you in well-doing through lukewarmness. This one who lives, and truly I lie not, would fain go up, if but the sun relight us. So tell us where the passage nearest is. These were the words of him who was my guide, and some one of those spirits said, Come on behind us, and the opening shalt thou find. So full of longing are we to move onward that we cannot, therefore pardon us if thou for churlishness our justice take. I was San Zeno's abbot at Verona, under the empire of good Barbarossa, of whom still sorrowing Milan holds discourse, and he has one foot in the grave already, who shall ere long lament that monastery, and sorry be of having there had power, because his son, in his whole body sick, and worse in mind, and who was evil born, he put into the place of its true pastor. If more he said, or silent was, I knew not. He had already passed so far behind us, but this I heard, and to retain it pleased me. And he, who was in every need my succour, said, Turn thee hitherward, see two of them come fastening upon slothfulness their teeth. In rear of all they shouted, Sooner were the people dead to whom the sea was opened, than their inheritors the Jordan saw. And those who the fatigue did not endure unto the issue with Anchises' son, themselves to life without in glory offered. Then, when from us so separated were those shades, that they no longer could be seen, within me a new thought did entrance find. Whence others many and diverse were born, and so I lapsed from one into another, that in a reverie mine eyes I closed, and meditation into dream transmuted. End of Canto 18 Canto 19 It was the hour when the diurnal heat no more can warm the coldness of the moon, vanquished by earth or peradventure Saturn, when geomancers their fortuna major see in the orient before the dawn, rise by a path that long remains not dim. There came to me in dreams a stammering woman, squint in her eyes and in her feet distorted, with hands dissevered and of sallow hue. I looked at her, and as the sun restores the frigid members, which the night benumbs, even thus my gaze did render voluble, her tongue and made her all erect thereafter, 
in little while, and the lost countenance, as love desires it so, in her did colour. When in this wise she had her speech unloosed, she gan to sing so that with difficulty could I have turned my thoughts away from her. I am, she sang, I am the siren sweet, who mariners amid the main on man, so full am I of pleasantness to hear. I drew Ulysses from his wandering way unto my song, and he who dwells with me seldom departs so wholly I content him. Her mouth was not yet closed again before appeared a lady saintly and alert, close at my sign to put her to confusion. Virgilius, O oh Virgilius, who is this? Sternly she said, and he was drawing near with eyes still fixed upon that modest one. She seized the other and in front laid open, rending her garments and her belly showed me. This waked me with a stench that issued from it. I turned mine eyes and good Virgilius said, at least thrice have I called thee, rise and come, find we the opening by which thou mayest enter. I rose, and full already of high day were all the circles of the sacred mountain. And with the new sun at our back we went, following behind him, I my forehead bore like unto one who has it laden with thought, who makes himself the half-arch of a bridge. When I heard say, Come, hear the passages, spoke in a manner gentle and benign, such as we hear not in this mortal region. With open wings which of a swan appeared, upward he turned us, who thus spake to us, between the two walls of the solid granite. He moved his pinions afterward and fanned us, affirming those chelugent to be blessed, for they shall have their souls with comfort filled. What aileth thee that I to earth thou gazest? To me my guide began to say, we both somewhat beyond the angel having mounted, and I, with such misgiving makes me go, a vision new which bends me to itself, so that I cannot from the thought withdraw me. Didst thou behold, he said, that old enchantress whose soul above us henceforth is lamented? Didst thou behold how man is freed from her? Suffice at thee, and smite earth with thy heels, thine eyes lift upward to the lure, that whirls the eternal king with revolutions vast. Even as the hawk that first his feet surveys, then turns him to the coal and stretches forward, the desire of food that draws him thither, such I became, and such as far as cleaves the rock to give away to him who mounts, went on to where the circling doth begin. On the fifth circle I had come forth, people I saw upon it who were weeping, stretched prone upon the ground, all downward turned. Adhesit pavimento anima mea, I heard them say with sighing so profound that hardly could the words be understood. O ye elect of God, whose sufferings, justice, and hope both render less severe, direct ye us toward the high ascents. If ye are come secure from this prostration, and wish to find the way most speedily, let your right hands be evermore outside. Thus did the poet ask, and thus was answered, by them somewhat in front of us, whence I, in what is spoken, divined the rest concealed, and unto my lord's eyes mine eyes I turned, whence he assented with a cheerful sign, to what the sight of my desire implored. When of myself I could dispose at will, above that creature did I draw myself, whose words before had caused me to take note, saying, O spirit in whom weeping ripens, that without which to God we cannot turn, Susp suspend a while for me thy greater care. Who wast thou, and why are your backs turned upwards? Tell me, and if thou wouldst that I procure thee anything there whence living I departed. And he to me, Wherefore our backs the heaven turned to itself, no shalt thou, but beforehand, seest quod ego fui successor petri. Between Siestri and Chiaveri descends a river beautiful, and of its name the title of my blood its summit makes. A month and little more, said I how, weighs the great cloak on him from Meyer who keeps it, for all the other burdens seemed a feather. Tardy, ah, woe is me, was, was my conversion, but when the Roman shepherd I was made, then I discovered life to be a lie. I saw that there the heart was not at rest, nor farther in that life could one ascend, whereby the love of this was kindled in me. Until that time a wretched soul, and parted from God was I, and wholly avaricious. Now, as thou seest, I here am punished for it. What avarice does is here made manifest, in the purgation of these souls converted, 
and no more bitter pain than the mountain has, even as our eye did not uplift itself aloft being fastened upon earthly things. So justice here has merged it in earth, as avarice had extinguished our affection for every good whereby was action lost. So justice here doth hold us in restraint, bound and imprisoned by the feet and hands, and so long as it pleases the just Lord shall we remain immovable and prostrate. I on my knees had fallen and wished to speak, but even as I began, and he was where, only by listening of my reverence. What cause, he says, has downward bent thee thus, and I to him, for your own dignity standing, my conscience stung me with remorse. Straighten thy legs, and upward raise thee, brother. He answered, Ere not, fellow servant, am I, with thee and with the others, to one power. If ever that holy evangelic sound, which saith nec nubint, thou hast heard, well canst thou see why in this wise I speak. Now go, no longer will I have thee linger, because thy stay doth incommode my weeping, with which I ripen that which thou hast said. On earth I have a grandchild named Alagia, good in herself unless indeed our house malevolent may make her by example, and she alone remains to me on earth. End of Canto 19 Canto 20 Ill strives the will against a better will. Therefore, to pleasure him against my pleasure, I drew the sponge not saturate from water. Onward I moved, and onward moved my leader, through vacant places, skirting still the rock, as on a wall close to the battlements. For they that through their eyes pour drop by drop the melody which all the world pervades, on the other side, too, near the verge approach. Accursed mayst thou be, thou old she-wolf, more than all the other beasts has prey, because of hunger infinitely hollow. O oh, heaven, in whose gyration some appear to think conditions here below are changed, when will he come through whom she shall depart? Onward we went with footsteps slow and scarce, and I attentive to the shades I heard, piteously weeping and bemoaning them, and I by peradventure heard Sweet Mary uttered in front of us amid the weeping, even as a woman does who is in childbirth, and in continuance, how poor thou wast is manifested by that hostelry where thou didst lay thy sacred burden down. There afterward I heard, O good Fabricus, virtue with poverty didst thou prefer to the possession of great wealth with vice. So pleasurable were these words to me that I drew farther onward to have knowledge, touching that spirit whence they seemed to come. He furthermore was speaking of the largest which Nicholas unto the maidens gave, in order to conduct their youth to honour. O oh, soul that dost so excellently speak! Tell me who wast thou, said I, and why only thou dost renew these praises well deserved? Not without recompense shall be thy word if I return to finish the short journey of that life which is flying to its end. And he, I tell thee, not for any comfort I may expect from earth, but that so much grace shines in thee, or ever thou art dead. I was the root of that malignant plant which overshadows all the Christian world, so that good fruit is seldom gathered from it. But if Douay and Ghent and Lee Lim Bruges had power, soon vengeance would be taken on it. And this I pray of him who judges all. Hugh Capet was I called upon the earth. From me were born the Louis and Philips, by whom in later days has France been governed. I was the son of a Parisian butcher, what time the ancient kings had perished all, excepting one contrite in cloth of grey. I found me grasping in my hands the reign of the realm's government, and so great power of new acquest, and so with friends abounding, that to the widowed diadem pr promoted the, the head of mine own offspring was from whom the consecrated bones of these began. So long as the great dowry of province out of my blood took not the sense of shame, t'was little worth, but still it did no harm. Then it began, with falsehood and with force, its rapine, and thereafter for amends took Ponthieu, Normandy, and Gascony. Charles came to Italy, and for amends a victim made of Conradin, and then trust Thomas back to heaven for amends, a time I see not very distant now, which draweth forth another Charles from France, the better to make known both him and his, 
unarmed he goes, and only with the lance that Judas jousted with, and that he thrusts so that he makes the paunch of Florence burst. He thence not land, but sin and infamy shall gain, so much more grievous to himself as the more light such damage he accounts. The other, now gone forth, taken his ship, see I his daughter sell, and chaffer for her, as corsairs do with other female slaves. What more, O avarice, canst thou do to us, since thou my blood so to thyself hast drawn? It careth not for its own proper flesh, that less may seem the future ill and past. I see the flower de luce Alagna enter, and Christ in his own vicar captive made. I see him yet another time derided, I see renewed the vinegar and gall, and between living thieves I see him slain. I see the modern Pilati so relentless. This does not sate him, but without decretal he to the temple bears his sordid sails. When, O oh my lord, shall I be joyful made by looking on the vengeance which, concealed, makes sweet thine anger in thy secrecy? What I was saying of that only bride of the Holy Ghost, and which occasioned thee to turn towards me for some commentary, so long has been ordained to all our prayers, as the day lasts, but when the night comes on, contraries and we take instead thereof. At that time we repeat Pygmalion, of whom a traitor, thief, and parricide made his insatiable desire of gold, and the misery of avaricious Midas that followed his inordinate demand, at which forevermore one needs but laugh, and foolish Achan each one then records, and how he stole the spoils, so that the wrath of Joshua still appears to sting him here. Then we accuse Sapphira with her husband, we laud the hoofbeats Heliodorus had, and the whole mount in infamy in circles. Polymnestor, who murdered Polydorus, here finally is cried, O Crassus, tell us, for thou dost know, what is the taste of gold? Sometimes we speak, one loud, another low, sometimes the desire of speech that spurs us to greater now, and now to lesser pace. But in the good that here by day is talked of, Ere while alone I was not, yet near by no other person lifted up his voice. From him already we departed were, and made endeavour to overcome the road, as much as was permitted to our power. When I perceived, like something that is falling, the mountain tremble, whence a chill seized on me, as seizes him who to his death is going. Certes, so violently shook not Delos, before Litona made her nest therein, to give birth to the two eyes of the heaven. Then upon all sides there began a cry, such that the master drew himself towards me, saying, Fear not, while I am guiding thee. Gloria and Excelsius Deo, all were saying, from what near I comprehended, where it was possible to hear the cry. We paused immovable and in suspense, even as the shepherds who first heard that song, until the trembling ceased, and it was finished. Then we resumed again on our holy path, watching the shades that lay upon the ground, already turned to their accustomed plaint. No ignorance ever with so great a strife had rendered me importunate to know, if erreth not in this my memory, as meditating then I seemed to have, nor out of haste to question did I dare, nor of myself I there could aught perceive. So I went onward timorous and thoughtful. End of Canto Twenty Canto Twenty One the natural thirst that never is satisfied excepting with the water for whose grace the woman of Samaria besought, put me in travail and haste goaded me along the encumbered path behind my leader, and I was pitying that righteous vengeance, and lo, in the same manner as Luke writeth that Christ appeared too upon the way, from the sepulchral cave already risen, a shade appeared to us and came behind us down gazing on the prostrate multitude nor were we aware of it until it spake, saying, My brothers, may God give you peace. We turned us suddenly, and Virgilius rendered to him the countersign thereto conforming. Thereon began he, In the blessed council, thee may the court voracious place in peace, that me doth banish in eternal exile. How, said he, and the while we went with speed, if ye are shades whom God deems not on high, who up his stairs so far has guided you? And, said my teacher, if thou note the marks which this one bears, and which the angel traces, 
well shalt thou see he with the good must drain. But because she who spinneth day and night for him had not yet drawn the distaff off, with cloth o' lays for each one and compacts, his soul, which is thy sister and my own, in coming upwards could not come alone, by reason that it sees not in our fashion. Whence I was drawn from out the ample throat of hell to be his guide, and I shall guide him, as far on as my school has power to lead. But tell us, if thou knowest, why such a shudder, erstwhile the mountain gave, and why together all seemed to cry as far as its moist feet. In asking he so hit the very eye of my desire, that merely with the hope my thirst became the less unsatisfied. Not is there, he began, that without order may the religion of the mountain feel, nor aught that may be foreign to its custom. Freeze it here from every permutation, from what from itself heaven in itself receiveth, can be of this the cause and not beside. Because that neither rain, nor hail, nor snow, nor dew, nor hoar frost any higher falls than the short little stairway of three steps, dense clouds do not appear, nor rarefied, nor coruscation, nor the daughter of Thamus, that often upon earth her region shifts. No arid vapour any farther rises than to the top of the three steps I spake of, whereon the vicar of Peter has his feet. Lower down, perchance, it trembles less or more, but for the wind that in the earth is hidden, I know not how, up here it never trembled. It trembles here whenever any soul feels itself pure, so that it soars or moves to mount aloft, and such a cry attends it. Of purity the will alone gives proof, which, being wholly free to change its convent, takes by surprise the soul and helps it fly. First it wills well, but the desire permits not which divine justice with the self-same will there was to sin upon the torment sets. And I, who have been lying in this pain five hundred years and more, but just now felt a free volition for a better seat. Therefore thou hurts the earthquake and the pious spirits along the mountain rendering praise unto the Lord that soon he sped them upwards. So said he to him, and since we enjoy as much in drinking as the thirst is great, I could not say how much it did me good. And the wise leader, Now I see the net that snares you here, and how ye are set free, why the earth quakes, and wherefore ye rejoice. Now who thou wast be pleased that I may know, and why so many centuries thou hast here been lying, let me gather from thy words. In days when the good Titus, with the aid of the supremest king, avenged the wounds whence issued forth the blood by Judas sold, under the name that most endures and honours was I on earth, that spirit made reply, greatly renowned, but not with faith as yet. My vocal spirit was so sweet that Rome, me a Thalusian, drew unto herself, where I deserved to deck my brows with myrtle. Satius the people name me still on earth, I sang of Thebes and then of great Achilles, but on the way fell with my second burden. The seeds unto my ardour were the sparks of that celestial flame which heated me, whereby more than a thousand have been fired. Of the Aeneid speak I, which to me a mother was, and was my nurse in song, without this weight I not a drachma's weight. And to have lived upon the earth that time Virgilius lived, I would accept one son more than I must ere issuing from my ban. These words towards me made Virgilius turn with looks that in their silence said, Be silent, but yet the power that wills cannot do all things. For tears and laughter are such pursuivants unto the passion from which each springs forth, and the most truthful least the will they follow. I only smiled as one who gives the wink, whereat the shade was silent, and it gazed into mine eyes where most expression dwells, and, As thou mayst consummate a labour so great, it said, why did thy face just now display to me the lightning of a smile? Now am I caught on this side and on that, one keeps me silent, one to speak conjures me, wherefore I sigh, and I am understood. Speak, said my master, and be not afraid of speaking, but speak out, and say to him what he demands with, with such solicitude. One sigh. Thou peradventure marvellous, O antique spirit, at the smile I gave, but I will have more wonder seize upon thee, this one, 
who guides on high these eyes of mine is that Virgilius, from whom thou didst learn to sing aloud of men and of the gods. If other cause thou my smile impudest, abandon it as false, and trust it was those words which thou hast spoken concerning him. Already he was stooping to embrace my teacher's feet, but he said to him, Brother, do not, for shade thou art, and shade beholdest. And he uprising, Thou canst thou the sum of love which warms me to thee comprehend, when this our vanity I disremember, treating a shadow as substantial thing. End of Canto 21「This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Purgatorio, Cantos 22-27. to Canto 22 Already was the angel left behind us, the angel who to the sixth round had turned us, having erased one mark from off my face. And those who have in justice their desire had said to us, Beati, in their voices, with Sitio, and without more ended it. And I, more light than through the other passes, went onward so, that without any labour I followed upward the swift-footed spirits. When thus Virgilius began, The love kindled by virtue I another kindles, Provided outwardly its flame appear. Hence from the hour that Juvenal descended among us Into the infernal limbo, Who made apparent to me thy affection, My kindliness towards thee was as great As ever bound one to an unseen person, So that these stairs will now seem short to me, but tell me, and forgive me as a friend, If too great confidence let loose the rein, And as a friend now hold discourse with me. How was it possible within thy breast For avarice to find place, Mid so much wisdom, As thou wast filled with by thy diligence? These words excited Stasius at first, Somewhat to laughter. Afterward he answered, Each word of thine is love's dear sign to me, Verily oftentimes do things appear which give fallacious matter to our doubts, instead of the true causes which are hidden. Thy question shows me thy belief to be that I was niggard in the other life, it may be from the circle where I was. Therefore know thou that avarice was removed too far from me, and this extravagance thousands of lunar periods have punished. And were it not that I my thoughts uplifted, When I the passage heard where thou exclaimest, As if indignant unto human nature, To what impellest thou not, O cursed hunger of gold, The appetite of mortal men? Revolving I should fear the dismal joustings. Then I perceived the hands which spread too wide their wings in spending, And repented me as well of that as of my other sins. How many with shorn hair shall rise again because of ignorance, Which from this sin cuts off repentance, living and in death? And know that the transgression which rebuts by direct opposition any sin, Together with it here its verdure dries. Therefore if I have been among that folk which mourns its avarice, To purify me, for its opposite has this befallen me. Now when thou sangest the relentless weapons of the twofold affliction of Jocasta, the singer of the songs bucolic said, From that which Cleo there with three preludes, it does not seem that yet had made thee faithful, that faith without which no good works suffice. If this be so, what candles or what sun scattered thy darkness, so that thou didst trim thy sails behind the fishermen thereafter? And he to him, Thou first directedest me towards Parnassus in its grots to drink, And first concerning God didst me enlighten. Thou didst as me who walketh in the night, Who bears his light behind, which helps him not, 
but wary makes the persons after him, when thou didst say, The age renews itself, justice returns, and man's primeval time, and a new progeny descends from heaven. Through thee I poet was, through thee a Christian, but that thou better see what I design, to colour it will I extend my hand. Already was the world in every part pregnant with the true creed, disseminated by messengers of the eternal kingdom, and thy assertion, spoken of above, with the new preachers was in unison, whence I to visit them the custom took. Then they became so holy in my sight, that when Domitian persecuted them, not without tears of mine were their laments. And all the while that I on earth remained, them I befriended, and their upright customs made me disparage all the other sects. And ere I led the Greeks on to the rivers of Thebes, in poetry, I was baptized, for out of fear was covertly a Christian, for a long time professing paganism, and this lukewarmness caused me the fourth circle to circuit round more than four centuries. Thou, therefore, who hast raised the covering that hid from me whatever good I speak of, while in ascending we have time to spare, tell me, in what place is our friend Terentius, Caecilius, Plautus, Varro, if thou knowest? Tell me if they are damned, and in what alley? These, Perseus and myself, and others many, replied my leader, with that Grecian are whom more than all the rest the muses suckled, in the first circle of the prison blind. Oft times we of the mountain hold discourse which has our nurses ever with itself. Euripides is with us, Antiphon, Simonides, Agatho, and many other Greeks who have old their brows with laurel decked. There some of thine own people may be seen, Antigone, Deiphile, and Argia, and there Ismene, mournful as of old, there she is seen who pointed out Langia, there is Tiresias' daughter, and there Thetis, and there Deidamia with her sisters. Silent already were the poets both, attend once more in looking round about, from the ascent and from the walls released. And four handmaidens of the day already were left behind, and at the pole the fifth was pointing upwards still its burning horn, what time my guide? I think that towards the edge our dexter shoulders it behoves us turn, circling the mount as we are wont to do. Thus in that region custom was our ensign, and we resumed our way with less suspicion for the assenting of that worthy soul. They in advance went on, and I alone behind them, and I listened to their speech, which gave me lessons in the art of song. But soon their sweet discourses interrupted a tree which midway in the road we found, with apples sweet and grateful to the smell. And even as a fir tree tapers upward from bough to bough, so downwardly did that, I think in order that no one might climb it. On that side where our pathway was enclosed fell from the lofty rock a limpid water, and spread itself abroad upon the leaves. The poets twain unto the tree drew near, and from among the foliage a voice cried, Of this food ye shall have scarcity. Then said, More thoughtful Mary was of making the marriage feast complete and honourable than of her mouth which now for you responds. And for their drink the ancient Roman women with water were content, and Daniel disparaged food and understanding one. The primal age was beautiful as gold, acorns it made with hunger savorous, and nectar every rivulet with thirst. Honey and locusts were the aliments that fed the Baptist in the wilderness, whence he is glorious and so magnified, as by the Evangel is revealed to you. Canto 23 the while among the verdant leaves mine eyes I riveted, as he is wont to do who wastes his life pursuing little birds. My more than father said unto me, Son, come now, because the time that is ordained us more usefully should be apportioned out. 
I turned my face, and no less soon my steps unto the sages, who were speaking so they made the going of no cost to me. And lo, were heard a song and a lament, Labia mea domine, in fashion such that delight and dolence it brought forth. O oh, my sweet father, what is this I hear? began I, and he answered, Shades that go perhaps the not unloosing of their debt. In the same way that thoughtful pilgrims do, who unknown people on the road are taking, turn themselves round to them, and do not stop, even thus behind us with a swift emotion coming and passing onward, gazed upon us a crowd of spirits, silent and devout. Each in his eyes was dark and cavernous, pallid in face, and so emaciate that from the bones the skin did shape itself. I do not think that so to merest rind could Erisichthon have been withered up by famine, when most fear he had of it. Thinking within myself, I said, Behold, this is the folk who lost Jerusalem when Mary made a prey of her own son. Their sockets were like rings without the gems. Whoever in the face of men reads Omo might well in these have recognized the M. Who would believe the odor of an apple? begetting longing, could consume them so, and that of water, without knowing how. I still was wondering what so famished them, for the occasion not yet manifest of their emaciation and sad squalor, and lo, from out the hollow of his head, his eyes a shade turned on me and looked keenly, then cried aloud, What grace to me is this? Never should I have known him from his look, but in his voice was evident to me that which his aspect had suppressed within it. This spark within me wholly re-enkindled my recognition of his altered face, and I recalled the features of Forese. Oh, do not look at this dry leprosy, he entreated me, which doth my colour discolour, nor at default of flesh that I may have. But tell me truth of thee. And who are those two souls that yonder make for thee an escort? Do not delay in speaking unto me. That face of thine which dead I once bewept gives me for weeping now no lesser grief, I answered him, beholding it so changed. But tell me, for God's sake, what thus denudes you? Make me not speak while I am marvelling, for ill speaks he who's full of other longings. And he to me, from the eternal council falls power into the water and the tree behind us left, whereby I grow so thin. All of this people who lamenting sing, for following beyond measure appetite in hunger and thirst are here re-sanctified. Desire to eat and drink enkindles in us the scent that issues from the apple tree and from the spray that sprinkles o'er the verdure and not a single time alone this ground encompassing is refreshed our pain. I say our pain, and ought to say our solace. For the same wish doth lead us to the tree which led the Christ rejoicing to say, Eli, when with his veins he liberated us. And I to him, For Eze, from that day when for a bitter life thou changedst worlds, up to this time five years have not rolled around, if sooner were the power exhausted in thee of sinning more than thee the hour surprised of that good sorrow which to God reweds us, how hast thou come up hitherward already? I thought to find thee down there underneath, where time for time doth restitution make. And he to me thus speedily has led me to drink of the sweet wormwood of these torments, my Nella with her overflowing tears. She, with her prayers devout and with her sighs, has drawn me from the coast where one awaits, and from the other circles set me free. So much more dear and pleasing is to God my little widow, whom so much I loved, as in good works she is the more alone. For the Barbagia of Sardinia, by far more modest in its women, is than the Barbagia I have left her in. O oh, brother sweet, what wilt thou have me say? A future time is in my sight already, to which this hour will not be very old, when from the pulpit shall be interdicted to the unblushing womankind of Florence to go about displaying breast and paps. 
What savages were e'er, what Saracens who stood in need to make them covered go of spiritual or other discipline? But if the shameless women were assured of what swift heaven prepares for them, already wide open would they have their mouths to howl, for if my foresight here deceive me not, they shall be sad ere he has bearded cheeks, who now is hushed to sleep with lullaby. O brother, now no longer hide thee from me. See that not only I, but all these people are gazing there, where thou dost veil the sun. Whence I told him, If thou bring back to mind what thou with me hast been, and I with thee, the present memory will be grievous still. Out of that life he turned me back, who goes in front of me. Two days are gone when round the sister of him yonder showed herself. And to the sun I pointed, Through the deep night of the truly dead has this one led me, With his true flesh that follows after him. Thence his encouragements have led me up, Ascending and still circling round the mounts that you doth straighten, Whom the world made crooked. He says that he will bear me company, till I shall be where Beatrice will be. There it behoves me to remain without him. This is Virgilius, who thus says to me, and him I pointed at. The other is that shade for whom just now shook every slope your realm that from itself discharges him. Canto 24 nor speech the going, nor the going that slackened, But talking we went bravely on, Even as a vessel urged by a good wind. And shadows that appeared things doubly dead, From out the sepulchres of their eyes Betrayed wonder at me, aware that I was living. And I, continuing my colloquy, said, Peradventure he goes up more slowly than he would do, For other people's sake. But tell me, if thou knowest, where is Picarda? Tell me if any one of note I see among this folk that gazes at me so. My sister, who twixt beautiful and good, I know not which was more, triumphs rejoicing already in her crown on high Olympus. So said he first, and then, Tis not forbidden to name each other here, So milked away is our resemblance by our dieting. This, pointing his finger, is Buona Giunta, Buona Giunta of Luca, and that face beyond him there, more peaked than the others, has held the holy church within his arms. From Tours was he, and purges by his fasting Bolsena's eels and the Vernacchia wine. He named me many others one by one, and all contented seemed at being named, so that for this I saw not one dark look. I saw for hunger bite the empty air Ubaldin Dalapila and Boniface, who with his crook had pastured many people. I saw Messer Marchese, who had leisure once at Forley for drinking with less dryness, and he was one who ne'er felt satisfied. But as he does who scans, and then doth prize one more than others, did I him of Luca, who seemed to take most cognizance of me. He murmured, and I know not what Gentuka from that place heard I, where he felt the wound of justice that doth macerate them so. O soul, I said, that seemest so desirous to speak with me, do so that I may hear thee, and with thy speech appease thyself and me. A maid is born, and wears not yet the veil, began he, who to thee shall pleasant make my city, howsoever men may blame it, Thou shalt go on thy way with this prevision. If by my murmuring thou hast been deceived, True things hereafter I will declare to thee. But say if him I here behold, Who forth evoked the new invented rhymes, Beginning, ladies that have intelligence of love, And I to him, one am I who, whenever love doth inspire me, Note, and in that measure which he within me dictates singing go. O oh, brother, now I see, said he, the knot which me, the notary, and Gitone held short of the sweet new style that now I hear. I do perceive full clearly how your pens go closely following after him who dictates, which with our own forsooth came not to pass. 
and he who sets him forth to go beyond no different sees from one style to another, and as if satisfied he held his peace. Even as the birds that winter towards the Nile sometimes into a phalanx form themselves, then fly in greater haste and go in file. In such wise all the people who were there, turning their faces, hurried on their steps, both by their leanness and their wishes light. And as a man who weary is with trotting lets his companions onward go and walks until he vents the panting of his chest, so did Forese let the holy flock pass by and came with me behind it, saying, When will it be that I again shall see thee? How long, I answered, I may live, I know not, yet my return will not so speedy be, but I shall sooner in desire arrive, because the place where I was set to live from day to day of good is more depleted, and until dismal ruin seems ordained. Now go, he said, for him most guilty of it at a beast's tail, behold, I dragged along towards the valley where is no repentance. Faster at every step the beast is going, increasing ever more until it smites him and leaves the body vilely mutilated. Not long those wheels shall turn, and he uplifted his eyes to heaven, ere shall be clear to thee that which my speech no father can declare. Now stay behind, because the time so precious is in this kingdom that I lose too much by coming onward thus abreast with thee. As sometimes issues forth upon a gallop a cavalier from out a troop that ride, and seeks the honour of the first encounter, so he with greater strides departed from us, and on the road remained I with those two who were such mighty marshals of the world. And when before us he had gone so far, mine eyes became to him such pursuivance as was my understanding to his words, appeared to me with laden and living boughs another apple-tree, and not far distant from having but just then turned thitherward. People I saw beneath it lift their hands, and cry I know not what towards the leaves, like little children, eager and deluded, who pray, and he they pray to doth not answer, but to make very keen their appetite, holds their desire aloft, and hides it not. Then they departed as if undeceived, and now we came unto the mighty tree, which prayers and tears so manifold refuses. Pass farther onward without drawing near, the tree of which Eve ate is higher up, and out of that one has this tree been raised. Thus said I know not who among the branches, whereat Virgilius, Stasius, and myself went crowding forward on the side that rises. Be mindful, said he, of the accursed ones formed of the cloud-rack, who inebriate combated Theseus with their double breasts, and of the Jews who showed them soft in drinking, whence Gideon would not have them for companions when he towards Midian the hills descended. Thus, closely pressed to one of the two borders, on we passed, hearing sins of gluttony, followed forsooth by miserable gains then set at large upon the lonely road, a thousand steps and more we onward went, in contemplation, each without a word. "'What go ye thinking thus, ye three alone?' said suddenly a voice, whereat I started as terrified and timid beasts I won't. I raised my head to see who this might be, and never in a furnace was there seen metals or glass so lucent and so red as one I saw who said, if it may please you to mount aloft, here it behoves you turn. This way goes he who goeth after peace. His aspect had bereft me of my sight, so that I turned me back unto my teachers, like one who goeth as his hearing guides him. And as, the harbinger of early dawn, the air of May doth move and breathe out of fragrance, impregnate all with herbage and with flowers, so did I feel a breeze strike in the midst of my front, and felt the moving of the plumes that breathed around an odour of ambrosia, and heard it said, Blessed are they whom grace so much illumines, that the love of taste excites not in their breasts too great desire hungering at all times so far as is just. Canto 25 
Now was it the ascent no hindrance brooked, because the sun had his meridian circle to Taurus left, and night to Scorpio. Wherefore, as doth a man who tarries not, but goes his way, whate'er to him appear, if of necessity the sting transfix him, in this wise did we enter through the gap, taking the stairway one before the other, which by its narrowness divides the climbers. And as the little stork that lifts its wing with a desire to fly, and does not venture to leave the nest, and lets it downward droop, even such was I, with the desire of asking kindled and quenched, unto the motion coming he who doth address himself to speak. Not for our pace, though rapid it might be, my father sweet forbore, but said, Let fly the bow of speech thou to the barb hast drawn. With confidence I opened then my mouth, and I began, How can one meagre grow there where the need of nutriment applies not? If thou wouldst call to mind how Meliga was wasted by the wasting of a brand, this would not, said he, be to thee so sour. And wouldst thou think how at each tremulous motion trembles within a mirror your own image, that which seems hard would mellow seem to thee, and that thou mayst content thee in thy wish, lo, Statius here, and him I call and pray he now will be the healer of thy wounds. If I unfold to him the eternal vengeance, responded Statius, where thou present art, be my excuse that I can naught deny thee. But he began, Son, if these words of mine thy mind doth contemplate and doth receive, they'll be thy light unto the how thou sayest. The perfect blood which never is drunk up into the thirsty veins, and which remaineth like food that from the table thou removest, takes in the heart for all the human members virtue informative, as being that which to be changed to them goes through the veins, again digest, descends it where tis better silent to be than say, and then drops thence upon another's blood in natural vase. There one together with the other mingles, one to be passive meant, the other active by reason of the perfect place it springs from, and being conjoined begins to operate, coagulating first, then vivifying what for its matter it had made consistent, the active virtue being made a soul as of a plant, in so far different this on the way is that arrived already, then works so much that now it moves and feels like a sea fungus, and then undertakes to organize the powers whose seed it is. Now, son, dilates and now distends itself the virtue from the generator's heart, where nature is intent on all the members. But how from animal it man becomes, thou dost not see as yet. This is a point which made a wiser man than thou once err so far, that in his doctrine separate he made the soul from possible intellect, and he no organ saw by this assumed. Open thy breast unto the truth that's coming, and know that, just as soon as in the fetus the articulation of the brain is perfect, the primal motor turns to it well pleased, and so great art of nature, and inspires a spirit new with virtue all replete, which what it finds there active doth attract into its substance, and becomes one soul, which lives and feels and of itself revolves. And that thou less may wonder at my word, behold the sun's heat which becometh wine, joined to the juice that from the vine distills. Whenever Lachesis has no more thread, it separates from the flesh, and virtually bears with itself the human and divine. The other faculties are voiceless all, the memory, the intelligence, and the will in action far more vigorous than before. Without a pause it falleth of itself, in marvellous way on one shore or the other, there of its roads it first is cognizant. Soon as the place there circumscribeth it, the virtue informative rays round about as, and as much as, in the living members. And even as the air, when full of rain, by alien rays that are therein reflected, with diverse colours shows itself adorned, 
so there the neighbouring air doth shape itself into that form which doth impress upon it virtually the soul that has stood still, and then in manner of the little flame which followeth the fire where'er it shifts, after the spirit followeth its new form. Since afterwards it takes from this its semblance, it is called shade, and thence it organises thereafter every sense even to the sight. Thence it is that we speak, and thence we laugh. Thence it is that we form the tears and sighs that on the mountain thou mayhap hast heard. According as impresses our desires and other affections, so the shade is shaped, and this is cause of what thou wonderest at. And now, unto the last of all the circles had we arrived, and to the right hand turned, and were attentive to another care. There the embankment shoots forth flames of fire, and upward doth the cornice breathe a blast that drives them back and from itself sequesters. Hence we must needs go on the open side, and one by one, and I did fear the fire on this side, and on that the falling down. My leader said, Along this place one ought to keep upon the eyes a tightened rein, seeing that one so easily might err. Summe Deus Clementiae, in the bosom of the great burning chanted then I heard, which made me no less eager to turn round, and spirit saw I walking through the flame, wherefore I looked to my own steps and theirs apportioning my sight from time to time. After the close which to that hymn is made, aloud they shouted, Virum non cognosco, then recommenced the hymn with voices low. This also ended, cried they, to the wood Diana ran and drove forth Helis therefrom, who had of Venus felt the poison. Then to their song returned they, then the wives they shouted, and the husbands who were chaste, as virtue and the marriage vow imposes, and I believe that them this mode suffices, for all the time the fire is burning them, with such care is it needful, and such food, that the last wound of all should be closed up. Canto 26 While on the brink, thus one before the other, we went upon our way, oft the good master said, Take thou heed, suffice it that I warn thee. On the right shoulder smote me now the sun, that raying out already the whole west changed from its azure aspect into white. And with my shadow did I make the flame appear more red, and even to such a sign shade saw I many, as they went, give heed. This was the cause that gave them a beginning to speak of me, and to themselves began they to say, That seems not a factitious body. Then towards me as far as they could come came certain of them, always with regard not to step forth where they would not be burned. O oh, thou who goest, not from being slower but reverent perhaps behind the others, answer me, who in thirst and fire and burning. Nor to me only is thine answer needful, for all these have greater thirst for it than for cold water, Ethiop or Indian. Tell us how is it that thou makest thyself a wall unto the sun, as if thou hadst not entered as yet into the net of death? Thus one of them addressed me, and I straight should have revealed myself, were I not bent on other novelty that then appeared. For through the middle of the burning road there came a people face to face with these, which held me in suspense with gazing at them. There see I hastening upon either side each of the shades, and kissing one another without a pause, content with brief salute. Thus in the middle of their brown battalions, muzzle to muzzle, one ant meets another, perchance to spy their journey or their fortune. No sooner is the friendly greeting ended, or ever the first footstep passes onward, each one endeavours to outcry the other. The newcome people, Sodom and Gomorrah! The rest, into the cow Pasiphae enters, so that the bull unto her lust may run. Then as the cranes that to Riphaean mountains might fly in part, and part towards the sands, these of the frost, those of the sun avoidant, one folk is going and the other coming, and weeping they return to their first songs, and to the cry that most befitteth them. 
and close to me approached even as before the very same who had entreated me, attent to listen in their countenance. I, who their inclination twice had seen, began, O souls secure in the possession whene'er it may be of a state of peace, neither unripe nor ripened have remained my members upon earth, but here are with me with their own blood and their articulations. I go up here to be no longer blind. A lady is above, who wins this grace, whereby the mortal through your world I bring. But as your greatest longing satisfied may soon become, so that the heaven may house you which full of love is, and most amply spreads, tell me, that I again in books may write it, who are you, and what is that multitude which goes upon its way behind your backs? Not otherwise with wonder is bewildered the mountaineer, and staring round is dumb, when rough and rustic to the town he goes, than every shade became in its appearance. But when they of their stupor were disburdened, which in high hearts is quickly quieted, blessed be thou who of our borderlands, he recommenced who first had questioned us, experienced freightest for a better life. The folk that comes not with us have offended in that which once Caesar, triumphing, heard himself called in contumely queen. Therefore they separate, exclaiming Sodom, themselves reproving even as thou hast heard, and add unto their burning by their shame. Our own transgression was hermaphrodite, but because we observed not human law, following like unto beasts our appetite, in our opprobrium by us is read, when we part company, the name of her who bestialized herself in bestial wood. Now knowest thou our acts, and what our crime was. Wouldst thou perchance by name know who we are? There is not time to tell, nor could I do it. Thy wish to know me shall in sooth be granted. I am Guido Guinicelli, and now purge me, having repented ere the hour extreme. The same that in the sadness of Lycurgus two sons became, their mother re-beholding such I became, but rise not to such height. The moment I heard name himself the father of me and of my betters, who had never practised the sweet and gracious rhymes of love, and without speech and hearing, thoughtfully for a long time I went, beholding him, nor for the fire did I approach him nearer. When I was fed with looking, utterly myself I offered ready for his service, with affirmation that compels belief, and he told me, Thou leavest footprints such in me from what I hear, and so distinct, Lethe cannot efface them, nor make dim. But if thy words just now the truth have sworn, tell me what is the cause why thou displayest in word and look that dear thou holdest me. And I to him, those dulcet lays of yours which, long as shall endure our modern fashion, shall make for ever dear thy very ink. O oh, brother, said he, he whom I point out, and here he pointed at a spirit in front, was of the mother tongue a better smith. Verses of love and proses of romance he mastered all, and let the idiots talk who think the lemosin surpasses him. To clear more than truth they turn their faces, and in this way establish their opinion, ere art or reason has by them been heard. Thus many ancients with Gitone did, from cry to cry still giving him applause, until the truth has conquered with most persons. Now if thou hast such ample privilege, tis granted thee to go unto the cloister wherein is Christ the abbot of the college. To him repeat for me a paternoster, so far as needful to us of this world, where power of sinning is no longer ours. Then to give place perchance to one behind, whom he had near, he vanished in the fire as fish in water going to the bottom. I moved a little towards him pointed out, and said that to his name my own desire an honourable place was making ready. He of his own free will began to say, Tan ma bellis vostra cortes de man, que je non puesque ni vuele a vos cobrir. Je suis Arnaud, que plor a ve chantan, con si ros ve la passada folor, e ve josen la jorn que sper danan, ara vus prec per aquela valor, 
que vous conduis al som de la scalina, so venja vous a temprar ma dolor. Then hid him in the fire that purifies them. Footnote translation. So pleases me your courteous demand, I cannot and I will not hide me from you. I am Arnaud who weep and singing go, Contrite I see the folly of the past, And joyous see the hoped-for day before me. Therefore do I implore you, By that power which guides you to the summit of the stairs, Be mindful to assuage my suffering. Canto 27 And when he vibrates forth his earliest rays, In regions where his Maker shed his blood, the Ebro falling under lofty Libra, and waters in the Ganges burnt with noon. So stood the sun. Hence was the day departing when the glad angel of God appeared to us. Outside the flame he stood upon the verge, and chanted forth, Beati mundo corde, in voice by far more living than our own, then, no one farther goes, souls sanctified, if first the fire bite not, Within it enter, and be not deaf unto the song beyond. When we were closed behind him, thus he said, Wherefore e'en such became I, when I heard him, As he who is put into the grave. Upon my clasped hands I straightened me, Scanning the fire, and vividly recalling The human bodies I had once seen burned. Towards me turned themselves my good conductors, And unto me Virgilius said, My son, here may indeed be torment, but not death. Remember thee, remember, and if I on Gerion have safely guided thee, what shall I do now I am near a god? Believe for certain, shouldst thou stand a full millennium in the bosom of this flame, it could not make thee bald a single hair. And if perchance thou think that I deceive thee, draw near to it, and put it to the proof that thine own hands upon thy garments hem. Now lay aside, now lay aside all fear, Turn hitherward, and onward come securely. And I still motionless and gainst my conscience, Seeing me stand still motionless and stubborn, Somewhat disturbed, he said, Now look thou, son, Twixt Beatrice and thee there is this wall. As at the name of Thisbe oped his lids the dying Pyramus, And gazed upon her, What time the mulberry became a vermilion, even thus, my obduracy being softened, I turned to my wise guide, Hearing the name that in my memory evermore is welling, Whereat he wagged his head and said, How now? Shall we stay on this side? Then smiled as one does at a child who's vanquished by an apple. Then into the fire in front of me he entered, Beseeching Stasius to come after me, Who a long way before divided us. When I was in it, into molten glass I would have cast me to refresh myself, So without measure was the burning there. And my sweet father, to encourage me, Discoursing still of Beatrice, went on, Saying, Her eyes I seem to see already. A voice that on the other side was singing, Directed us, and we, a tent alone on that, Came forth where the ascent began. Venite, benedicte patris mei, Sounded with a splendour, which was there, such it overcame me, and I could not look. The sun departs, it added, and night cometh, tarry ye not, for onward urge your steps, so long as yet the west becomes not dark. Straight forward through the rock the path ascended, in such a way that I cut off the rays before me of the sun that now was low, and of few stairs we yet had made a say, Ere by the vanished shadow the sun setting behind us we perceived, I and my sages, And ere in all its parts immeasurable the horizon of one aspect had become, And night her boundless dispensation held, Each of us of a stair had made his bed, Because the nature of the mount took from us the power of climbing more than the delight. Even as in ruminating passive grow the goats Who have been swift and venturesome upon the mountain tops Ere they were fed, hushed in the shadow while the sun is hot, Watched by the herdsman who upon his staff is leaning, And in leaning tendeth them. And as the shepherd, lodged out of doors, Passeth the night beside his quiet flock, Watching that no wild beast may scatter it, 
such at that hour were we, all three of us, I like the goat, and like the herdsman they, begirt on this side and on that by rocks. Little could there be seen of things without, but through that little I beheld the stars more luminous and larger than their wont, thus ruminating and beholding these, sleep seized upon me, sleep that often times before a deed is done has tidings of it. It was the hour, I think, when from the east first on the mountain Cytheria beamed, who with the fire of love seems always burning. Youthful and beautiful in dreams, methought I saw a lady walking in a meadow, gathering flowers, and singing, she was saying, Know whosoever may my name demand that I am Leah, and go moving round my beauteous hands to make myself a garland, to please me at the mirror. Here I deck me, but never does my sister Rachel leave her looking-glass, and sitteth all day long, to see her beauteous eyes, as eager is she as I am to adorn me with my hands. Her seeing, and me doing, satisfies. And now before the Antelucan splendours that unto pilgrims the more grateful rise, as home returning, less remote they lodge, the darkness fled away on every side, and slumber with it, whereupon I rose, seeing already the great masters risen. That apple sweet which through so many branches the care of mortals goeth in pursuit of, to-day shall put in peace thy hungerings. Speaking to me, Virgilius of such words as these made use, and never were there guerdons that could in pleasantness compare with these. Such longing upon longing came upon me, to be above, that at each step thereafter for flight I felt in me the pinions growing. When underneath us was the stairway all run o'er, and we were on the highest step, Virgilius fastened upon me his eyes, and said, The temporal fire and the eternal, son, thou hast seen, and to a place art come whereof myself no farther I discern. By intellect and art I here have brought thee. Take thine own pleasure for thy guide henceforth. Beyond the steep ways and the narrow art thou. Behold the sun that shines upon thy forehead. Behold the grass, the flowerlets, and the shrubs which of itself alone this land produces. Until rejoicing come the beauteous eyes which weeping cause me to come unto thee, thou canst sit down, and thou canst walk among them. Expect no more or word or sign from me. Free and upright and sound is thy free will, and error were it not to do its bidding. Thee or thyself I therefore crown and mitre. End of Canto 27 of Purgatorio This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. That's L I B R I V O X dot O R G. Recording by Christy Nowak. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Purgatorio, Canto 28 to 33. Purgatorio, Canto 28. Eager already to search in and round the heavenly forest, dense and living green, which tempered to the eyes the newborn day, without in more delay I left the bank, taking the level country slowly, slowly over the soil that everywhere breathes fragrance. A softly breathing air that no mutation had in itself upon the forehead smote me no heavier blow than of a gentle wind. Whereat the branches, lightly tremulous, did all of them bow downward toward that side where its first shadow casts the holy mountain, yet not from their upright direction swayed so that the little birds upon their tops should leave the practice of each art of theirs. But... With full ravishment the hours of prime, singing, received they in the midst of leaves that ever bore a burden to their rhymes, such as from branch to branch goes gathering on through the pine forest on the shores of Chiasi when Aeolus unlooses the Sirocco. 
Already my slow steps had carried me into the ancient wood so far that I could not perceive where I had entered it. And lo, my further course a stream cut off, which toward the left hand with its little waves bent down the grass on which its margin sprang. All waters that on earth most limpid are would seem to have within themselves some mixture compared with that which nothing doth conceal, although it moves on with a brown, brown current under the shade perpetual that never ray of the sun lets in, nor of the moon. With feet I stayed, and with mine eyes I passed beyond the rivulet to look upon the great variety of the fresh may. And there appeared to me, even as appears suddenly something that doth turn aside through very wonder every other thought, a lady, all alone, who went along singing and culling floweret after floweret, with which her pathway was all painted over. Ah, beauteous lady, who in rays of love dost warm thyself, if I may trust to looks which the heart's witnesses are wont to be, may the desire come unto thee to draw near to this river's bank, I said to her so much that I might hear what thou art singing. Thou makest me remember where and what Proserpina that moment was when lost her mother her, and she herself the spring. As turns herself, with feet together pressed, and to the ground a lady who is dancing, and hardly puts one foot before the other, on the vermilion and the yellow flowerets, she turned towards me, not in other wise than maiden, who her modest eyes casts down and my entreaties made to be content so near approaching that the dulcet sound came unto me together with its meaning as soon as she was where the grasses are bathed by the waters of the beauteous river to lift her eyes she granted me the boon i do not think there shone so great a light under the lids of venus when transfixed by her own son beyond his usual custom Erect upon the other bank she smiled, bearing full many colors in her hands which that high land produces without seed. Apart three paces did the river make us, but Hellespont, where Xerxes passed across, a curb still to all human arrogance, more hatred from Leander did not suffer for rolling between Cestus and Abydos than that from me, because it oped not then. Ye are newcomers, and because I smile, began she, peradventure in this place elect to human nature for its nest some apprehension keeps you marvelling but the psalm delictasi giveth light which has the power to uncloud your intellect and thou who foremost art and didst entreat me speak if thou wouldst hear more for i came ready to all thy questionings as far as needful the water said i and the forest's sound are combating within me my new faith in something which I heard opposed to this. Whence she, I will relate how from its cause proceedeth that which maketh thee to wonder, and purge away the cloud that smites upon thee. The good supreme, soul in itself delighting, created man good, and this goodly place gave him as hansel of eternal peace. By his default short while he sojourned here, by his default to weeping and to toil he changed his innocent laughter and sweet play that the disturbance which below is made by exultations of the land and water which far as may be follow after heat might not upon mankind wage any war this mount ascended towards the heaven so high and is exempt from there where it is locked now since the universal atmosphere turns in a circuit with the primal motion unless the circle is broken on some side upon this height that all is disengaged in living ether doth this motion strike and make the forest sound for it is dense and so much power the stricken plant possesses that with its virtue it impregns the air and this revolving scatters it around and yonder earth, according as tis worthy in self or in its clime, conceives and bears of diverse qualities the diverse trees. It should not seem a marvel then on earth, this being heard, whenever any plant without seed manifest there taketh root. And thou must know, this holy table-land in which thou art is full of every seed, and fruit has in it never gathered there. The water which thou seest springs not from vein restored by vapour that the cold condenses, like to a stream that gains or loses breath, but issues from a fountain, safe and certain, which, by the will of God, as much regains as it discharges, open on two sides. Upon this side with virtue it descends, which takes away all memory of sin, 
on that every good deed done restores it here lethe as upon the other side unui it is called and worketh not if first on either side it be not tasted this every other savour doth transcend and notwithstanding slaked so far may be thy thirst that i reveal to thee no more i'll give thee a corollary still in grace nor think my speech will be to thee less dear if it spread out beyond my promise to thee those who in ancient times have feigned in song the age of gold and its felicity dreamed of this place perhaps upon parnassus here was the human race in innocence here evermore was spring and every fruit this is the nectar of which each one speaks and then backward did i turn me wholly round unto my poets and saw that with a smile they had been listening to these closing words then to the beautiful lady turned mine eyes end of canto twenty eight purgatorio canto twenty nine singing like unto an enamoured lady she with the ending of her words continued beati quorum tecta sunt peccata and even as nymphs that wandered all alone among the sylvan shadows sedulous one to avoid and one to see the sun she then against the stream moved onward going along the bank and i abreast of her her little steps with little steps attending between her steps and mine were not a hundred when equally the margins gave a turn in such a way that to the east i faced nor even thus our way continued far before the lady wholly turned herself unto me saying brother look and listen and lo a sudden lustre ran across on every side athwart the spacious forest such that it made me doubt if it were lightning but since the lightning ceases as it comes and that continuing brightened more and more within my thought i said what thing is this and a delicious melody there ran along the luminous air whence holy zeal made me rebuke the hardihood of eve for there where earth and heaven obedient were the woman only and but just created could not endure to stay neath any veil underneath which had she devoutly stayed i sooner should have tasted those delights ineffable and for a longer time while mid such manifold first fruits i walked of the eternal pleasure all enwrapped and still solicitous of more delights in front of us like an enkindled fire became the air beneath the verdant boughs and the sweet sound as singing now was heard o virgin sacrosanct if ever hunger vigils or cold for you i have endured the occasion spurs me their reward to claim now helicon must needs pour forth for me and with her choir urania must assist me to put in verse things difficult to think a little further on seven trees of gold in semblance the long space still intervening between ourselves and them did counterfeit but when i had approached so near to them the common object which the sense deceives lost not by distance any of its marks the faculty that lends discourse to reason did apprehend that they were candlesticks and in the voices of the song hosanna above them flamed the harness beautiful far brighter than the moon in the serene of midnight at the middle of her month i turned me round with admiration filled to the good virgilius and he answered me with visage no less full of wonderment then back i turned my face to those high things which moved themselves towards us so sedately they had been distanced by new-wedded brides the lady chid me why dost thou burn only so with affection for the living lights and dost not look at what comes after them then saw i people as behind their leaders coming behind them garmented in white and such a whiteness never was on earth the water on my left flank was resplendent and back to me reflected my left side even as a mirror if i looked therein when upon my margin had such post that nothing but the stream divided us better to see i gave my steps repose and i beheld the flamelets onward go leaving behind themselves the air depicted and they of trailing pennons had the semblance so that it overhead remained distinct with sevenfold lists all of them of the colours whence the sun's bow is made and delia's girdle 
these standards to the rearward longer were than was my sight and as it seemed to me ten paces were the outermost apart under so fair a heaven as i describe the four-and-twenty elders two by two came in coronet with flower de luce they all of them were singing blessed thou among the daughters of adam art and blessed for evermore shall be thy loveliness after the flowers and other tender grasses in front of me upon the other margin were disencumbered of that race elect even as in heaven star followeth after star there came close after them four animals in coronet each one with verdant leaf plumed with six wings was every one of them the plumage full of eyes the eyes of argus if they were living would be such as these reader to trace their forms no more i waste my rhymes for other spendings press me so that i in this cannot be prodigal but read ezekiel who depicteth them as he beheld them from the region cold coming with cloud with whirlwind and with fire and such as thou shalt find them in his pages such were they here saving that in their plumage john is with me and differeth from him the interval between these four contained a chariot triumphal on two wheels which by a griffin's neck came drawn along and upward he extended both his wings between the middle list and three and three so that he injured none by cleaving it so high they rose that they were lost to sight his limbs were gold so far as he was bird and white the others with vermilion mingled not only rome with no such splendid car e'er gladdened africanus or augustus but poor to it that of the sun would be that of the sun which swerving was burnt up at the importunate orison of earth when jove was so mysteriously just three maidens at the right wheel in a circle came onward dancing one so very red that in the fire she hardly had been noted the second was as if her flesh and bones had all been fashioned out of emerald the third appeared as snow but newly fallen and now they seemed conducted by the white now by the red and from the song of her the others took their step or slow or swift upon the left hand four made holiday vested in purple following the measure of one of them with three eyes in her head in rear of all the group here treated of two old men i beheld unlike in habit but like in gait each dignified and grave one showed himself as one of the disciples of that supreme hippocrates whom nature made for the animals she holds most dear contrary care the other manifested with swords so shining and so sharp it caused terror to me on this side of the river thereafter four i saw of humble aspect and behind all an aged man alone walking in sleep with countenance acute and like the foremost company these seven were habited yet of the flower de luci no garland round about the head they wore but that of rose and other flowers vermilion at little distance would the sight have sworn that all were in a flame above their brows and when the car was opposite to me thunder was heard and all that folk august seemed to have further progress interdicted there with the vanward ensigns standing still end of purgatorio canto twenty nine when the septentrion of the highest heaven which never either setting new or rising nor veil of other cloud than that of sin and which made every one therein aware of his own duty as the lower makes whoever turns the helm to come to port motionless halted the voracious people that came at first between it and the griffin turned themselves to the car as to their peace and one of them as if by heaven commissioned singing veni sponsa de libano shouted three times and all the others after even as the blessed at the final summons shall rise up quickened each one from his cavern uplifting light the reinvested flesh so upon that celestial chariot a hundred rose ad vocem tante senis ministers and messengers of life eternal they all were saying benedictus qui venis and scattering flowers above and round about manibus odate lilia plenis ere now have i beheld as day began the eastern hemisphere all tinged with rose and the other heaven with fair serene adorned and the sun's face uprising overshadowed so that by tempering influence of vapours for a long interval the eye sustained it 
thus in the bosom of a cloud of flowers which from those hands angelical ascended and downward fell again inside and out over her snow-white veil with olive synced appeared a lady under a green mantle vested in colour of the living flame and my own spirit that already now so long a time had been that in her presence trembling with awe it had not stood abashed without more knowledge having by mine eyes through occult virtue that from her proceeded of ancient love and mighty influence felt as soon as on my vision smote the power sublime that had already pierced me through ere from my boyhood i had yet come forth to the left hand I turned, with that reliance with which the little child runs to his mother when he has fear or when he is afflicted, to say unto Virgilius, Not a drachm of blood remains in me that does not tremble. I know the traces of the ancient flame. But us, Virgilius of himself deprived, had left Virgilius, sweetest of all fathers, Virgilius, to whom I for safety gave me nor whatsoever lost the ancient mother availed my cheeks now purified from dew that weeping they should not again be darkened dante because virgilius has departed do not weep yet do not weep yet a while for by another sword thou needst must weep e'en as an admiral who on poop and prow comes to behold the people that are working in other ships and cheers them to well-doing upon the left-hand border of the car when at the sound i turned of my own name which of necessity is here recorded i saw the lady who erewhile appeared veiled underneath the angelic festival direct her eyes to me across the river although the veil that from her head descended encircled with the foliage of minerva did not permit her to appear distinctly in attitude still royally majestic continued she like unto one who speaks and keeps his warmest utterance in reserve look at me well in sooth i'm beatrice how didst thou deign to come unto the mountain didst thou not know that man is happy here mine eyes fell downward into the clear fountain but seeing myself therein i sought the grass so great a shame did weigh my forehead down as to the sun the mother seemed superb so she appeared to me for somewhat bitter tasted the savour of severe compassion silent became she and the angel sang suddenly in te domini speravi but beyond pedis meus did not pass even as the snow among the living rafters upon the back of italy congeals blown on and drifted by sclavonian winds and then dissolving trickles through itself whene'er the land that loses shadow breathes so that it seems a fire that melts a taper e'en thus was i without a tear or sigh before the song of those who sing forever after the music of the eternal spheres but when i heard in their sweet melodies compassion for me more than had they said o oh, wherefore lady dost thou thus upbraid him the ice that was about my heart congealed to air and water changed and in my anguish through mouth and eyes came gushing from my breast she on the right-hand border of the car still firmly standing to those holy beings thus her discourse directed afterwards ye keep your watch in the eternal day so that nor night nor sleep can steal from you one step the ages make upon their path therefore my answer is with greater care that he may hear me who is weeping yonder so that the sin and dole be of one measure not only by the work of those great wheels that destine every seed unto some end according as the stars are in conjunction but by the largesse of celestial graces which have such lofty vapours for their reign that near to them our sight approaches not such had this man become in his new life potentially that every righteous habit would have made admirable proof in him but so much more malignant and more savage becomes the land untilled and with bad seed the more good earthly vigour it possesses some time did i sustain him with my look revealing unto him my youthful eyes i led him with me turned in the right way as soon as ever of my second age i was upon the threshold and changed life himself from me he took and gave to others when from the flesh to spirit i ascended and beauty and virtue were in me increased i was to him less dear and less delightful and into ways untrue he turned his steps pursuing the false images of good that never any promises fulfil 
nor prayer for inspiration me availed by means of which in dreams and otherwise I called him back, so little did he heed them. So low he fell that all appliances for his salvation were already short, save showing him the people of perdition. For this I visited the gates of death, and unto him who so far up has led him my intercessions were with weeping born. God's lofty fiat would be violated if Lethe should be passed, and if such viands should taste it be without in any scot of penitence that gushes forth in tears. End of Canto 30 Purgatorio Canto 31 O thou who art beyond the sacred river, turning to me the point of her discourse, that edgewise even had seemed to me so keen, she recommenced, continuing without pause. Say if this be true, to such a charge thy own confessions need must be conjoined. My faculties were in so great confusion that the voice moved, but sooner was extinct than by its organs it was set at large. A while she waited, and then she said, What thinkest? Answer me, for the mournful memories in thee not yet are by the waters injured. Confusion and dismay together mingled forced such a yes from out my mouth that sight was needful to the understanding of it. Even as a crossbow breaks, when tis discharged too tensely drawn the bowstring and the bow, and with less force the arrow hits the mark, so I gave way beneath that heavy burden, outpouring in a torrent tears and sighs, and the voice flagged upon its passage forth. Whence she to me, in those desires of mine which led thee to the loving of that good beyond which there is nothing to aspire to, what trenches lying traverse, or what chains didst thou discover, that of passing onward thou shouldst have thus despoiled thee of the hope? And what allurements, or what vantages upon the forehead of the other showed, that thou shouldst turn thy footsteps unto them? After the heaving of a bitter sigh, hardly had I the voice to make response, and with fatigue my lips did fashion it. Weeping, I said. The things that present were, with their false pleasure, turned aside my steps, soon as your countenance concealed itself. And she, Shouldst thou be silent, or deny what thou confessest, not less manifest would be thy fault by such a judge tis known. But when from one's own cheeks comes bursting forth the accusal of the sin, in our tribunal against the edge the wheel doth turn itself. But still, that thou mayst feel a greater shame for thy transgression, and another time hearing the sirens thou mayst be more strong. Cast down the seed of weeping and attend, so shalt thou hear how, in an opposite way, my buried flesh should have directed thee. Never to thee presented art or nature pleasure so great as the fair limbs wherein I was enclosed, which scattered are in earth. And... If the highest pleasure thus did fail thee by reason of my death, what mortal thing should then have drawn thee into its desire? Thou oughtst verily at the first shaft of things fallacious have risen up to follow me, who was no longer such. Thou oughtest not to have stooped thy pinions downward to wait for further blows, or little girl, or other vanity of such brief use. The callow birdlet waits for two or three, but to the eyes of those already fledged, in vain the net is spread or shaft is shot. Even as children, silent in their shame, stand listening with their eyes upon the ground, and conscious of their fault, and penitent, so was I standing. And she said, If thou in hearing sufferest pain, lift up thy beard, and thou shalt feel a greater pain in seeing. With less resistance is a robust home uprooted, either by a native wind, or else by that from regions of Iribus, than I upraised at her command my chin. And when she by the beard the face demanded, well, I perceived the venom of her meaning. And, as my countenance was lifted up, mine eye perceived those creatures beautiful had rested from the strewing of the flowers. And, Still but little reassured, mine eye saw Beatrice turned round towards the monster that is one person only in two natures. Beneath her veil, beyond the margined green, she seemed to me far more her ancient self to excel than others here when she was here. So pricked me then the thorn of penitence that of all other things the one which turned me most to its love became the most my foe. 
Such self-conviction stung me at the heart. Overpowered I fell, and what I then became she knoweth who had furnished me the cause. Then, when the heart restored my outward sense, the lady I had found alone, above me, I saw, and she was saying, Hold me, hold me. Up to my throat she in the stream had drawn me, and dragging me behind her she was moving upon the water lightly as a shuttle. When I was near unto the blessed shore, Aspergus me, I heard so sweetly sung, Remember it I cannot, much less ride it. The beautiful lady opened wide her arms, embraced my head, and plunged me underneath, where I was forced to swallow of the water. Then forth she drew me, and all dripping brought into the dance of the four beautiful, and each one with her arm did cover me. We here are nymphs, and in the heaven are stars, ere Beatrice descended to the world, we as her handmaidens were appointed her. We'll lead thee to her eyes, but... For the pleasant light that within them is shall sharpen thine and three beyond who more profoundly look. Thus singing they began, and afterwards unto the griffin's breast they led me with them, where Beatrice was standing, turned towards us. See that thou dost not spare thine eyes, they said, before the emeralds have we stationed thee, whence love aforetime drew for thee his weapons. A thousand longings hotter than the flame fastened my eyes upon those eyes relucent that still upon the griffin steadfast stayed, as in the glass the sun, not otherwise within them was the twofold monster shining, now with one, now with the other nature. Think, reader, if within myself I marveled when I beheld the thing itself stand still and in its image it transformed itself. While with amazement filled and jubilant my soul was tasting of the food that while it satisfies us, makes us hunger for it. Themselves revealing of the highest rank and bearing did the other three advance, singing to their angelic saraband, Turn, Beatrice, O turn thy holy eyes, such was their song, unto thy faithful one who has to see thee taken so many steps, in grace. Do us the grace that thou unveil thy face to him, so that he may discern the second beauty which thou dost conceal. O splendor of the living light eternal, who underneath the shadow of Parnassus has grown so pale, or drunk so at its cistern, he would not seem to have his mind encumbered, striving to paint thee, as thou didst appear, where the harmonious heaven o'ershadowed thee, when in the open air thou didst unveil. End of Canto 31 Purgatorio, Canto 32 So steadfast and attentive were mine eyes in satisfying their decennial thirst that all my other senses were extinct, and upon this side and on that they had walls of indifference, so the holy smile drew them unto itself with the old net when forcibly my sight was turned away towards my left hand by those goddesses, because I heard from them a too intently and that condition of the sight which is in eyes but lately smitten by the sun bereft me of my vision some short while, but to the less when sight reshaped itself. I say to the less in reference to the greater splendor from which I perforce had withdrawn. I saw upon its right wing wheeled about the glorious host returning with the sun and with the sevenfold flames upon their faces. As underneath its shield, to save itself, a squadron turns, and with its banner wheels, before the whole thereof can change its front, that soldiery of the celestial kingdom, which marched in the advance, had wholly passed us, before the chariot had turned its pole. Then to the wheels the maidens turned themselves, and the griffin moved his burden benedite, but so that not a feather of him fluttered. The lady fair who drew me through the ford followed with Statius and myself the wheel which made its orbit with the lesser arc. So passing through the lofty forest, vacant by fault of her who the serpent trusted, angelic music made our steps keep time. Perchance as great a space had in three flights an arrow loosed from the string or passed as we had moved when Beatrice descended. I heard them murmur altogether, Adam! Then circled they about a tree, despoiled of blooms and other leafage, on each bough. Its tresses, which so much the more dilate as higher they ascend, had been, by Indians among their forests, marveled at for height. Blessed art thou, O griffin, who dost not pluck with thy beak these branches sweet to taste, since appetite by this was turned to evil. After this fashion round the tree robust the others shouted, 
and the twofold creature, thus is preserved the seed of all the just. And turning to the pole which he had dragged, he drew it close beneath the widowed bough, and what was of it unto it left bound. In the same manner as our trees, when downward falls the great light, with that together mingled which after the celestial Alaska shines, begin to swell, and then renew themselves, each one with its own color, ere the sun harness his steeds beneath another star, less than of rose, and more than violet a hue disclosing, was renewed the tree that had erewhile its boughs so desolate. I never heard, nor here below is sung, the hymn which afterward the people sang, nor did I bear the melody throughout. Had I the power to paint how fell asleep those eyes compassionless, of syrinx hearing, those eyes, to which more watching cost so dear, even as a painter who from model paints I would portray how I was lulled asleep, he may who well can picture drowsyhood. Therefore I pass to what time I awoke and say a splendor rent from me the veil of slumber and a calling rise what dost thou as to behold the apple tree in blossom which makes the angels greedy for its fruit and keeps perpetual bridles in the heaven peter and john and james conducted were and overcome recovered at the word by which still greater slumbers have been broken and saw their school diminished by the loss not only of elias but of moses and the apparel of their master changed. So I revived, and saw that piteous one above me standing, who had been conductress aforetime of my steps beside the river, and all in doubt I said, Where's Beatrice? And she, Behold her seated underneath the leafage new upon the root of it, behold the company that circles her, the rest behind the griffin are ascending with more melodious song and more profound. And if her speech were more diffuse, I know not, because already in my sight was she who from the hearing of aught else had shut me. Alone she sat upon the very earth, left there as guardian of the chariot which I had seen the biform monster fasten. And circling her, a cloister made themselves the seven nymphs, with those lights in their hands which are secure from Acalon to Auster. Short while shalt thou be here a forester, and thou shalt be with me for evermore a citizen of that Rome where Christ is Roman. Therefore, for that world's good which liveth ill, fix on the car thine eyes, and what thou seest, having returned to earth, take heed thou right. Thus Beatrice, and I, who at the feet of her commandments all devoted was, my mind and eyes directed where she willed never descended with so swift a motion fire from a heavy cloud when it is raining from out the region which is most remote as i beheld the bird of jove descended down through the tree rending away the bark as well as blossoms and foliage new and he with all his might the chariot smote whereat it reeled like a vessel in a tempest tossed by the waves now starboard now larboard Thereafter saw I leap into the body of the triumphal vehicle a fox that seemed unfed with any wholesome food. But for his hideous sins upbraiding him, my lady put him to as swift a flight as such a fleshless skeleton could bear. Then, by the way that it before had come, into the chariot's chest I saw the eagle descend and leave it feathered with his plumes. And such as issues from a heart that mourns, a voice from heaven there issued, and it said, my little bark, how badly art thou frightened! Methought then that the earth did yawn between both wheels, and I saw rise from it a dragon, who through the chariot upward fixed his tail, and as a wasp that draweth back its sting, drawing unto himself his tail malign, drew out the floor, and went his way rejoicing. That which remained behind, even as with grass a fertile region, with the feathers, offered perhaps with pure intention and benign, reclothed itself, and with them were reclothed the pole and both the wheels, so speedily a side doth longer keep the lips apart. Transfigured thus, the holy edifice thrust forward heads upon the parts of it, three on the pole and one at either corner. The first were horned like oxen, but the four had but a single horn upon the forehead, a monster such had never yet been seen. Firm as a rock upon a mountain high, seated upon it, there appeared to me a shameless whore, with eyes swift glancing round, and, as if not to have her taken from him, upright beside her I beheld a giant, and ever and on they kissed each other. But, 
Because she her wanton, roving eye turned upon me, her angry paramour did scourge her from her head unto her feet. Then, full of jealousy and fierce with wrath, he loosed the monster, and across the forest dragged it so far, he made of that alone a shield unto the whore and the strange beast. End of Canto 32 Purgatorio Canto 33 Deus venerunt gentes, alternating, now three, now four, melodious psalmody the maidens in the midst of tears began, and Beatrice, compassionate and sighing, listened to them with such a countenance that scarce more changed was Mary at the cross. But, when the other virgins place had given for her to speak, uprisen to her feet, with color as of fire, she made response, Modicum et non videbitis me, et iterum, my sister's predilect, modicum et vos videbitis me. Then, all the seven in front of her she placed, and after her, by beckoning only, moved me and the lady and the sage who stayed. So she moved onward, and I do not think that her tenth step was placed upon the ground when, with her eyes upon mine eyes, she smote, and with a tranquil aspect, Come more quickly, to me, she said, that, if I speak with thee, to listen to me thou mayst be well placed. As soon as I was with her as I should be, she said to me, Why, brother, dost thou not venture to question now, in coming with me? And unto those who are too reverential, speaking in presence of superiors, who drag no living utterance to their teeth, it me befell that without perfect sound began I, My necessity, Madonna, you know, and that which thereunto is good. And she to me, of fear and bashfulness henceforward I will have thee strip thyself, so that thou speak no more as one who dreams. Know that the vessel which the serpent broke was, and is not, but let him who is guilty think that God's vengeance does not fear a sop. Without an heir shall not forever be the eagle that left his plumes upon the car, whence it became a monster, then a prey. For verily I see, and hence narrate it, the stars already near to bring the time from every hindrance safe, and every bar within which a five hundred, ten, and five, one sent from God, shall slay the thievish woman, and that same giant who is sinning with her. And peradventure my dark utterance, like Themis and the Sphinx, may less persuade thee, since, in their mode, it clouds the intellect. But soon the facts shall be the Naiades, who shall this difficult enigma solve, without destruction of the flocks and harvests. Note thou, and even as by me are uttered these words, so teach them unto those who live that life which is a running unto death. And bear in mind, whene'er thou writest them, not to conceal what thou hast seen the plant that twice already has been pillaged here. Whoever pillages or shatters it, with blasphemy of deed, offendeth God, who made it holy for his use alone. For biding that, in pain and in desire, five thousand years and more the firstborn soul craved him who punished in himself the bite. Thy genius slumbers, if it deem it not for special reasons so preeminent in height and so inverted in its summit, and, if thy vain imaginings had not been water of Elsa round about thy mind, and Pyramus to the mulberry their pleasure, thou by so many circumstances only the justice of the interdict of God morally in the tree wouldst recognize. But since I see thee in thine intellect converted into stone and stained with sin, so that the light of my discourse doth daze thee, I will too, if not written at least painted, thou bear it back within thee, for the reason that synced with palm the pilgrim's staff is born. And I, as by a signet is the wax which does not change the figure stamped upon it, my brain is now imprinted by yourself. But wherefore, so beyond my power of sight, soars your desirable discourse, that I, the more I strive, so much the more I lose it? That thou mayest recognize, she said, the school which thou hast followed, and mayest see how far its doctrine follows after my discourse, and mayst behold your path from the divine, distant as far as separated is earth from the heaven that highest hastens on. Whence her I answered, I do not remember that ever I estranged myself from you, nor have I conscience of it that reproves me. And if thou art not able to remember, smiling, she answered, recollect thee now that thou this very day hast drunk of lethe, and if from smoke a fire may be inferred, such an oblivion clearly demonstrates some error in thy will elsewhere intent. 
Truly, from this time forward shall my words be naked, so far as it is befitting to lay them open unto thy rude gaze. And more coruscant with slower steps the sun was holding the meridian circle, which with the point of view shifts here and there when halted, as he cometh to a halt who goes before a squadron as its escort, if something new he find upon his way. The Lady Seven, at a dark shadow's edge, such as, beneath green leaves and branches black, the elp upon its frigid border wears. In front of them the Tigris and Euphrates methought I saw forth issue from one fountain, and slowly part, like friends from one another. O light! O glory of the human race! What stream is this, which here unfolds itself from out one source, and from itself withdraws? For such a prayer t'was said unto me, Pray, Matilda, that she tell thee. And here answered, as one does who doth free himself from blame, the beautiful lady. This and other things were told to him by me, and sure I am the water of Lethe has not hid them from him. And Beatrice, perhaps a greater care which oftentimes our memory takes away has made the vision of his mind obscure. But you know we behold that yonder rises, lead him to it, and, as thou art accustomed, revive again the half-dead virtue in him. Like gentle soul that maketh no excuse, but makes its own will of another's will as soon as by a sign it is disclosed, even so, when she had taken hold of me, the beautiful lady moved, and unto Statius said, in her womanly manner, Come with him. If, reader, I possessed a longer space for writing it, I yet would sing in part of the sweet draught that ne'er would satiate me, but, Inasmuch as full are all the leaves made ready for this second canticle, the curb of art no farther lets me go. From that most holy water I returned regenerate, in the manner of new trees that are renewed with a new foliage, pure and disposed to mount unto the stars. End of Purgatorio, Canto 28 to 32. End of the Divine Comedy, Purgatorio by Dante Alighieri and translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow.